When you grow up in a low-income neighborhood, you don't always have a chance to study the arts. Schools have cut back on those classes and private lessons are pricey. But in Pleasant City, one community center has found a way. A lot of us have been trying to get into better shape and many of the workouts we've been doing have been brutal. But they're nothing compared to what they were doing on the waterfront during a military fitness competition. They couldn't get to everyone, but fortunately, those who didn't get in on this day won't have to do without. You see it every day. People walking down the street, texting, checking their emails, talking on the phone. I mean, who hasn't done it, right? Yoga is believed to have a calming effect on adults who practice it, and it apparently works on babies, too. Just outside downtown, a historic cemetery has fallen into disrepair. The city started to fix it up with the help of volunteers, and what they've uncovered so far is simply amazing. Most people call police when there's a problem, but that's not the only time officers are in your area and they want you to know they're here to help. In West Palm Beach, cops are being encouraged to interact with the public between calls. Every time when you tell them, they just move out and after that. I know. They're trying to build good relationships when there's nothing going wrong, so if they do have to come back when there is trouble, people will trust them enough to cooperate. So you got to get out of your car. You gotta see people, look at people in the eye, shake hands, how you doing, how's your day? Hansen, Freddy Hansen y... Arinen. Y Arinen. ¿Son hermano? No. Of course, some days there is very little time to spare for relationship building. Señor, ¿cómo está? Yeah. Many of the calls they're sent on are the ones police dread. Domestic calls between relatives and friends where emotions run high. So what? We could all grow up living in a, a section 8 house. And cops often find themselves in the middle. I had to sell her to the store and I asked her why did she spend my other $5 and she got all hysterical. Your mom? Is it your mom or your sister or what? That's your mom? Yeah, that's my mom. And while the potential for making connections with people can be tricky. Do you have any warrants, sir? I don't. Okay. Just as the media's cameras tend to show up wherever there's even a hint of trouble. I'm just telling you, man, you can't be out here, dude. Police are also faced with the knowledge that everywhere they go, everyone they see, and even those they don't see, could have, at the absolute least, a cell phone camera recording their every move. You cannot keep doing this. I'm not taking you to jail. I don't want to take you to jail. The city recently bought body cameras for officers. They're not being used yet, but when they are, they will represent still another set of eyes and ears on police while they're on the job. I have great supervisors that they have always said, Whatever you do, do it as if you're with a family member and always as if somebody, the public, is watching you. It's a challenge they say they're up to as they work to keep their relationship with the people they serve cordial and the city calm. This is Cheryl Kahn reporting for TVAT. When you grow up in a low-income neighborhood, you don't always have a chance to study the arts. Schools have cut back on those classes and private lessons are pricey. But in Pleasant City, one community center has found a way. We have two solos, a piano and a flute selection. Enjoy! Dress rehearsal for the kids of Faith's Place is a very serious business. Sing out with Maribel, five. They're not professionals, but their instructors expect them to give it their all, whether acting, dancing, singing, or playing an instrument. Most of these young people probably won't go on to performing arts careers, but some may, and if they do, they'll have to keep on working hard, as their violin teacher, 29-year-old professional musician Gareth Johnson, can tell them. Hopefully, what comes out of this is people recognize talent. Johnson is among several musicians who volunteer their time to teach here. The son of two doctors, Johnson says that growing up he never had to borrow instruments or struggle to pay for lessons, things that are out of reach for most of the kids participating in programs at the center. Growing up, I'd pay two, three hundred dollars an hour for some lessons like this. While they're teaching, Johnson and the other instructors use a combination of encouragement, empathy, she has a different mouthpiece. And tough love. Well, they, they need to play it the right way. It's not that hard. But most of all, they try to inspire their students. <laughs> 
And there is perhaps nothing more inspiring than talented musicians who are already racking up accomplishments even though they're still in high school. Like 17-year-old Kavana Shuford and 14-year-old Cameron Williams who are already teaching here. Since I'm young myself, I'm, I'm able to pass on what I know to these kids in a way that they can understand and it really helps them grow. The teen musicians could spend their free time doing other things, but they feel that what they're doing here is just too important. Studies have shown that the arts has uh, improved test scores, so I feel that every student should have that opportunity. Me being African American as well as a female and a violist is all just things you don't see every single day. So my mom tells me to take everything that I have and make sure I can broadcast it to whoever I can. And their contribution does not go unnoticed. Our students are so blessed to have you here with them. Not because they're brown children, and you know what I mean, but because they're children and they really need this outlet. The fact that you're willingly coming to the hood to do this means a lot, and I believe you're going to be blessed bountifully. And so these performers are learning from each other, growing up together, and most likely never forgetting it. This is Cheryl Kahn reporting for TVAT. When you're trying to get in shape, but you don't have a lot of time to hit the gym, it can be very frustrating. But there are some good options if you're willing to work hard and make sacrifices. It's 12 o'clock in downtown West Palm Beach, and for some people, this is what's for lunch. They may grab something to eat on the way back to work, but for now, they're all about this and this. Because this is lunchtime boot camp at Ultima Fitness, one of a number of extreme workout programs that have been growing in popularity, where trainers push their clients to their limits nonstop. When you come in and you see what's on that board, I mean, it can, be, it can be pretty daunting. Those who choose this path to fitness are motivated by many different experiences. 21-year-old Taylor Snyder says the cruelty of childhood classmates led her to drop 40 pounds and then aim for perfection. I was pretty chubby. Basically, everyone made fun of me for my size, and they didn't really get to know me for me, and it really, really affected me. I changed my diet, and... I started just going hardcore on exercise. 34-year-old assistant state attorney Destiny Baker Sutton hopes to reclaim the strong toned body she had as a young gymnast, as well as develop more stamina for work and play. Just over the past uh, couple of years, I've put on about 30 pounds, and I'd like to get back to being in good shape and lose some weight. Those goals and the drive to reach them right away bring Destiny into a circle of friends who share her passion. And while some may say they're obsessed, Taylor, Destiny, and their fellow boot campers feel it's a healthy kind of obsession. Because I just feel so good. Um, I do enjoy the other people in my class. And together, they dig deep to find the strength to get to the end of today's lunch hour and then do it all over again tomorrow. This is Cheryl Kahn reporting for TV18. The dream of owning a home has always seemed like an impossible one to a lot of people, but a new program in West Palm Beach is putting home ownership within the reach of many of those who thought it would never happen. Candace Stevens is just settling into her new Coleman Park home. After years of renting, she's beyond excited about the move. It's just a, a joy to be able to own my own home. It's, uh, it's a dream come true. Joseph Leo, a Haitian immigrant whose home is on the next block, is pretty ecstatic too. And his daughter Stracy's especially happy about having her very own room away from her little sisters, where she says she'll finally have peace and quiet. Both houses used to be decrepit eyesores before being cleaned up and renovated. They were sold to people who probably wouldn't have been able to afford them if they hadn't gotten a little help. This is a first time home buyer program and it's funded through the Neighborhood Stabilization Program, which is a federal HUD funded program. And the first time home buyers that are, get a chance the opportunity to get this house, they make 80% or below the median income. But it's not just about getting families into their own homes. It's also about reducing urban blight so that the whole neighborhood benefits. We believe that when people own their homes, they take better care of them and that the, neighbor, the neighborhood will be um, revitalized, to, uh, rejuvenated. And in the Stevens and Leo households, it's the start of a whole new chapter 
in their lives. This is Cheryl Kahn reporting for TV18. It's something they hope they'll never have to do, but for these rookie cops, knowing how to shoot a gun is critical. So is trying to avoid being shot themselves. I try to teach them to have a survival mindset, making sure that you're able to go home ideally in the same condition you came to work and being able mentally to do that. But how to handle weapons is only one piece of what they'll be learning. Their training ranges from how to drive a squad car while pursuing a suspect. If you're in a situation where you're in traffic or whatever, you can't move, you can't go anywhere, then you have to get to your gun. To how to cuff him properly when they do catch him. Your feet together. Get on the way. And how to treat the wounded if they get to a scene before paramedics arrive. You got there, what's that look like, an exit wound? Yes, I don't have a bleed and then there's another exit wound. For these seven new officers, the learning curve varies. Some served in the military before joining the force, others took a different route. 30-year-old Chicago native Brent True calls himself the old man in his class, and he has, in fact, led a very full life already. I went to school to be a youth pastor, and I was a youth pastor for about three years in Gurney, Illinois. You know, when I was a little kid, I always wanted to be in law enforcement, and in high school it was kind of a fork in the road. Do I want to go to ministry? Do I want to do law enforcement? I chose ministry, and after a few years, I just realized I wasn't happy. Married with children, True postponed his start on the force because of a family crisis. I have three kids. Two of them were diagnosed with a pre-leukemia at the beginning of the year, so they had to get bone marrow transplants. Now on the road to recovery, True's kids and his wife will finally be able to see him in action in his new role. 24-year-old Ulysses Plana traveled the long road to get here, too. Plana moved to Miami from Cuba 10 years ago with his mother and younger sister. With a single mom working long hours to keep a roof over their heads, Plana says he had to grow up fast. No dad in the house, so pretty much I was the man of the house. My mom asked me sometimes, do, do you regret anything that you have done? And I'm, I respond with a no, like not at all, because I'm, I'm 24, but I feel I've grown a lot because of that. That maturity will serve him well as Plana adjusts to his new job, one he chose carefully after finishing college. And while they could face more challenges as the years go by, right now both True and Plana feel only optimism, that they will find joy in their jobs, that they will make a difference. You know, 30 years from now, hopefully I'll still be here, about ready to retire, and I can look back and just, just enjoy the moments. This is Cheryl Kahn reporting for TV18.